When you hear this, turn the page. The A-Team. This story is called Cops and Cops. In 1972, a crack commando unit was sent to prison by a military court for a crime they didn't commit. These men promptly escaped from a maximum security stockade to the Los Angeles underground. Today, still wanted by the government, they survive as soldiers of fortune. If you have a problem, if no one else can help, and if you can find them, maybe you can hire the A-Team. The A-Team arrive at a small motel and make their way towards one of the cabins. Murdoch is perplexed. I don't get it. You say you've not accepted the job yet. So why are we all out here to meet this dame? Hannibal looks at his cigar. This has to be a group decision, guys. You'll soon see what I mean. They are led into the cabin by a young woman in her early 20s. This is June Carraway, fellas. I'll let her explain the situation. B.A. looks around warily and sits on the bed facing the door. Face and Murdoch look uneasy. June Carraway glances at Hannibal. I called for your help, not for myself, but for my fiancé. Why couldn't he do it himself? You'll realize that when you meet him. She opens the bathroom door. Come in now, Steve. B.A. leaps to his feet, and Murdoch and Face stiffen for action as Steve comes into the room. He's a cop. What is this, a sit-up? Hannibal calms them. Steve looks embarrassed. I understand your feelings. Always having to avoid the police for fear of being handed over to the military. And of course, by rights, it's my duty to inform them of your whereabouts. B.A. strides forward. What's with this guy? You want I should flatten him? Hannibal shakes his head. Let him have his say first. Go on, Steve. Yes, I'm a cop. And proud of it. It was a long time before June convinced me that the only thing for me to do was to ask for your help. He goes on to explain that the captain of his precinct called him into his office alone and asked him to take part in crooked deals with known criminals. I told him I'd have nothing to do with it. He said if I didn't, he'd frame me and get me thrown out of the force and into jail. June butts in. And the police force is his life. He should have a brilliant career ahead of him. At last, the A-Team all agree to help, and Hannibal tells Steve to go along with his captain and report back to them what happened. In two days, June relays a message to Hannibal. The captain is taking Steve along to introduce him to the mob tonight. Okay, we'll keep an eye on him. That night, as patrolman Steve Kansky and Captain Hartley leave the precinct, they are followed discreetly by the A-Team in their van. When the two police officers enter a building, the van stops for a moment to drop face and then drives on for a couple of blocks and parks off the main street. Face follows the two men into the building, taking some long-range listening equipment with him so that the A-team can record any conversations he may overhear. But he is no sooner inside than police arrive from nowhere and storm into the building. B.A. is furious. I told you it was a trap, man. He is about to rush off to rescue Face, but Hannibal restrains him. Hold it, B.A. There's too many of them. We've got to think this through. Suddenly, the receiver in the van crackles into life, and a voice comes over the loudspeaker. This is Captain Hartley. I know you can hear me, A-Team, because I'm talking into the bug your man had with him. Now listen good. Your man is in my hands. If you want to save him from the military prison, call me at the precinct tomorrow. Murdoch is outraged. I knew that Steve Kansky was a plant. Hannibal is not so sure. Next day, he arranges a meeting with the captain. Neither want to be observed, so they chose a stretch of lonely coastline seldom visited by anyone but birds. To avoid any further trap, Hannibal arrives at the rendezvous by motorboat and finds Hartley waiting for him at the water's edge. 
welcome ashore, Mr. Smith. Never mind the formalities. Let's get on with it, Harker. Not yet. I know how good you guys are at overhearing things. Maybe you have microphones on your person. I don't. Hartley takes out his revolver and levels it at Hannibal. Well, just to be sure, I want you to take off all your clothes. We're on the beach after all. Reluctantly, Hannibal undresses. Now, how about you doing the same for me? No dice, Mr. Smith. It's too cold for sunbathing, and I'm calling the shots. Hartley laughs, but breaks off as Hannibal slings his clothes into his boat and runs into the sea until the water is up to his waist. Okay, then, Captain. Keep your clothes on. But unless you want to shout, you'll have to come out here to talk to me. Cursing, Hartley peels off his clothes, drops them on the sand, and wades out to Hannibal. Now, Captain, what's the deal? Well, Mr. Smith, there's no reason we should be against each other. With your team's expertise, you could be top of the criminal league. And with my help, you need never get caught. What would you get out of it? Fifty percent of all you take. And I can find you some good pickings. Hannibal considers. I need face back. Of course. You get him back when you've done a couple of jobs. But I need the extra man. We're a team. The captain smiles. Tell you what. You can have Patrolman Katsky. He's a good man. Ah, the other guys had never worked with him. He led them into a trap. Oh, no. He didn't know what he was doing. He's an honest cop. He had to be, to convince you. Hannibal agrees to the terms, and Hartley tells him to keep in touch, and he will let him know when he has a suitable job for the A-team to pull. Hannibal jumps into his boat and reverses out to sea. Pity about your uniform, Captain. It looks kind of wet. Hartley turns and looks with dismay at his clothes floating on the incoming tide. When the music stops, turn your cassette over. away on top of the cliffs, Murdoch chuckles as he looks through the viewfinder of a long focus video camera. It's all on tape, B.A. How's the sound? Perfect! I'm glad to hear that cop Kansky is on the level. Hannibal keeps in touch with Hartley by public telephone, and while waiting for him to come up with a job, he makes inquiries to discover what has happened to Face. He learns that he's in an out-of-town jail accused of assault. But there is no mention of the A-team on the charge sheet. I guess that crook Hartley would rather have us working for him than turn us in. At last, Hartley arranges another meeting. At the zoo this time, far from the sea. I thought if you saw a few caged animals, it might make you think of your buddy locked safely away. Make you concentrate on your work. Hannibal takes a cigar. Thoughtful of you, Captain. I notice you're not wearing your uniform today. What happened? Get caught in the rain? Hartley snarls. Very amusing, Smith. Keep walking. As they walk, Hartley outlines the heist he wants the A-team to carry out. There's a consignment of drugs going from the laboratory to a big warehouse complex on the other side of the city. Perfectly legal, but worth a fortune on the underground market. I'll give you full details of the secret route and tell you where to intercept it. You dispose of the goods, we share the profit, and you get your boy back. Hannibal has led the way to the sea lion enclosure and manages to contrive that Hartley is close to the pool as a large animal dives into the water. There is a great splash, and Hartley is drenched. Hannibal shakes his head. My, what a pity. Your best suit, too. Leaving the captain soaked and furious, Hannibal reports back to B.A. and Murdoch. I don't like the idea of working with that cop, Kansky. We need a fourth man, Murdoch. 
And for the scheme I have in mind, we really need a fifth. We have to convince Hartley that the A-team are using their van to attack that drugs truck. I'm not having no cop traveling on my wheels, man. Hannibal explained. Don't worry, VA. I want you to get hold of another van and make it look like ours. And when you've done that, make our van look the way I tell you. And you've got to be ready by tonight. While B.A. sets about his task, Hannibal and Murdoch call on patrolman Steve Kansky and his girlfriend, June. Hartley said we could use you. No doubt to get you deeply involved in his crooked schemes. But it suits us. Is there another guy you can trust? Steve is not sure, but June turns to Hannibal. What does this other man have to do? Nothing strenuous. Just sit beside Steve in the fake A-team van and pretend to be Murdoch. I could do that. Murdoch raises his hands in disbelief. Why, Miss Garraway, I surely am flattered. Steve is against it. No, June, it's too dangerous. What if something goes wrong? If something goes wrong, I want to be with you. But you don't look like Murdoch. Murdoch nods. At last, a man of perception. Hannibal is not so sure. Uh, with her hair piled under Murdoch's cap, sitting down in dark clothes, a dark night. And we know we can trust her. At last, both Murdoch and Steve agree. And that evening, the dummy A-Team van sets off with Steve at the wheel and the disguised June beside it, while the real van, driven by B.A., with the real Murdoch at his side, drives away in the opposite direction. B.A. is not happy with the van. She don't handle right all dressed up to look like a police wagon. It ain't right. The wheels don't see. To match the van's disguise, B.A. and Murdoch wear police uniform, and they drive out of town to the small country jail where Face is imprisoned. It's dark when they arrive, and they park the van outside the jail. There's just one officer on duty. Murdoch waves a piece of paper at him. Got to transfer your prisoner, man. Hey, wait a minute. Let's see that document. As he takes it, B.A. grabs him in a bear hug from behind while Murdoch takes his keys and releases Face. They leave the officer in his place. Face smiles at him. Hope you enjoy your stay as much as I have. Back in the van, B.A. pulls a lever and the disguising panels fall away, revealing the A-Team van in all its glory. B.A. is happy at last as he puts his foot down hard. Meanwhile, in the parked dummy van, Steve and June wait as the truck carrying drugs comes level with them. Then Steve takes an automatic rifle and fires at the tires. The truck skids to a halt, and the driver jumps out and runs off. Steve fires at him, and the man appears to fall. At that moment, Captain Hartley and his cronies come out of hiding. Well done, A-Team. A nice haul. Steve shouts at him. You'll never get away with it, Captain! Oh, but I will. We'll drive the drugs to a safe place and say you took them. They'll find your body floating in the ocean tomorrow, and the rest of the A-Team will join their friend on the way back to the army. Suddenly, shots are fired in the air, and more men pour out of the surrounding buildings. They call on Hartley and his men to throw down their weapons. Stand where you are! We're federal agents! Hartley tries to bluster it out. We've just caught the A-Team! And that renegade officer just shot the driver of this truck. But, unharmed, the truck driver is being picked up by the real A-Team van. For he is Hannibal, who hijacked the drug consignment after tipping off the federal agents that Hartley was going to steal it. And as the captain and his villainous crew are led away to captivity, the A-Team speeds swiftly through the night, united again ready for their next adventure.